Hey everybody, what is up? This is Kerstin here. Welcome back to the Balanced Vibes podcast. Today, I got an idea to do a podcast episode on what to actually healthy and fit and lean and uh, people in great health are doing and some of the things that they're probably not doing. So the reason why I got this idea is that I noticed that a lot of things, people just have these assumptions like, oh, you look fit and you look like you have a good body composition, you have a lot of muscle, you have this great shape. I bet that you're doing this and that and the third thing, and then you're probably completely staying away from all of these other things. And I think, honestly, if you asked this person, what are the things that you are doing to stay that healthy and fit and have that physique and all that good stuff that you kind of want to have too, uh, you would be surprised by some of the answers that you are getting. So this is what we're going to talk about today. I feel like it's important because a lot of times we have this like uh, false ideas, like how extreme you have to be in order to have that level of fitness uh, and health that some people have, which just think it has to be super hard. It has to be very, very difficult to accomplish. And uh, it's, you know, she's probably a superhuman for doing all these things, but it's actually not the case. So here are some of the things that this person who you are maybe admiring for her fitness, for her physique, all that is probably not doing. And later I'm going give to you, give you some of the things that she's probably doing. All right. The things that she's probably not doing is dieting and eating low calories all the time. It is so common that people think that it's the answer is, you know, to answer to a good body composition and weight loss and fat loss is to eat maybe like 1500 calories or something low all the time. But it is probably not true at all. So those who stay in great health and are able to maintain muscle mass so that they look good also have that definition. They are not eating in a calorie deficit all the time. Actually, where they're eating most of the time is at their maintenance level. And you can figure out if you are eating at your maintenance level by getting my Lean Ladies Calorie Protein and Workout Guide. And there are very exact calculations there that help you to figure that thing out. So the person that you're admiring for their physique and fitness is not dieting all the time also because if she did she could not put in the work in the gym she could not build the muscle that she has that gives her that shape that she has if she was dieting all the time she would just not have that because in order to have the muscle mass and the definition you actually do need enough calories the second thing that she's probably not doing is working out at 5 a.m. and then working 14 hour days and filling every minute of their schedule and then not sleeping enough, right? So this is what so many people are doing. They think, okay, I'm dedicated, I'm committed. Even if I got four hours of sleep, I'm gonna do and get that workout done. I'm gonna do that 5, 5 a.m. run or a boot camp but you don't realize that you're only exhausting yourself more. And then you have a bunch of commitments in every single day and you have to get them all done and so many demands and you're saying yes to everything. That healthy and fit person that you're looking at is probably not doing all the things. She is not doing the crazy early workout if she didn't get enough sleep. She's actually aware of the fact that she needs sleep more than she needs a really intense workout that is only going to increase her cortisol levels and make herself more exhausted, more, more tired, and also the recovery is going to slow down. So she's probably not doing these things. She's also probably not filling every minute of her schedule with stuff. She's probably not saying yes to everything to just get more things. She's not obsessively moving all the time and doing the things all the time um, just to burn more calories and you know do more workouts because we have to have balance there, right? Your results that you get from the workouts are only as good as your recovery is. You cannot exhaust yourself, and especially if you uh, don't pay attention to your sleep and get the, the results that you want to get. The next thing that the person is probably not doing is running every single day. And honestly, this is something that I get sometimes. People ask me, how much do you run? I'm like, I don't run. I don't run. Maybe I run once, once a month, maybe. I've had that so many times. People ask me, um, even one of my personal training clients, maybe like we've been working out together for years now, but last year she still asked me, how much do you run now? And after that was, I cannot believe that you're in great shape if you're not running. I'm like, I am not running. I'm just not running. And you know, if you want to run a couple of times a week, that's fine, do it. But don't assume that the person who's in a great shape is like, running all the time this is such a common question and i think it just speaks to like what we believe in we believe that running is something that gets us in a good shape and this is what we all should be doing but that person that you are probably admiring for their 
muscle definition and overall strength is probably not running every single day doing crazy amounts of cardio. All right, then the next thing that a person is probably not doing is eating low carbohydrates or even worse, doing, car um, doing keto. Because you need, for muscle definition, you also need carbohydrates. You need energy. So carbs are your fastest source of energy, your first preferred source of energy. Of course, we always talk about protein, which is very important for muscle growth, but also without carbohydrates, without enough carbohydrates, your workouts are just just going to be tanking. You don't have the energy for it. You work out where you're like, ah, just blah, whatever. And you don't have the energy and you also don't get that muscle growth if you are skipping uh, carbs. So I know that these tires are really popular and so many people think, oh, look at her. She's so lean. She's She's got abs. She got shoulder definition. That's so cool. She's got to be keto, right? Because right now this is the trend. And when you take it the different period in time, you know, whatever was the trend diet uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, people are like, oh, she's got to do that. She's probably doing that. Otherwise she wouldn't look that good. But the answer might be when you ask that person, are you doing low carbs? She's probably like, hell no. Like, I don't know who you follow, for example, on social media, but some of the people, some of the fittest and leanest the most muscular and really good looking, in my opinion, people are always talking about carbohydrates, how they eat them before working out, how they eat them after working out. They're not like, okay, carbohydrates, only vegetables, they eat bagels and stuff, right? <laughs> you can totally do that. You don't have to worry about, oh my God, I cannot have rice. I cannot have potatoes. I cannot have bread. God, for, God forbid if I have that. So the it's just like, it's a total misunderstanding when, when you think that um, those people who look very fit and lean are not having, having any carbohydrates, probably not the case at all. The next thing that that fit and lean person is probably not doing is worrying so much about the number on the scale. Again, people who have a good amount of muscle mass understand that also the muscle weighs something and you know, they make it on the scale every now and then to see what the, what the situation is, if they've gained something, lost something, to get a little bit of data, but they don't make their decisions like panic, in a panic way to change something real quick because the scale went up today like two pounds compared to yesterday. Oh my goodness, I'm going to cut the calories low. I'm not going to have carbs anymore. They don't, they don't do that shit because they know that muscle weighs something too. I mean, what do you think muscle is, right? It's a tissue. It has weight. Of course, it weighs something. And also these people understand that overnight uh, weight fluctuations are also caused by something else, not fat loss, sorry, not fat gain, because you don't gain body fat like that overnight. Maybe you had a later dinner. Maybe you had more sodium. And by the way, sodium is nothing to be afraid of. Maybe you had more intense workouts and your body is still recovering. These can all be the reasons why your scale is up. Maybe you are approaching your period. Maybe you are right now on your ovulation. Things that impact uh, women's weight, there are millions, right? So they don't freak out if their scale number went up. And I talk about it so much, but I just want to make sure that you get that message that you should not let the scale define how your health is. You should not let the scale define how your workouts uh, are going you should not be freaking out if you're gaining a pound or two. Just relax, relax. Understand that these fluctuations are normal and you shouldn't really let that ruin your day or let that dictate what you should be eating on that day. Just like move on, eat normal things, eat, uh, eat you know, all the macros that you're always eating. Uh, make sure that you're getting everything and not worry about it too much because people who are in a great shape don't panic over a pound that they gained on the scale. And one more thing that these people are probably not doing is overthinking and being overly anxious about every decision, whether it comes to food or otherwise. So sometimes you think that, okay, they have everything dialed. And of course, yes, there are people who have everything 101% dialed. For example, like um, bodybuilders, right? This is their lifestyle. This is what they have to do pre-competition. There's literally like no way that they're going to just on accident eat five half like 50 calories more or miss their uh, carbs by this many grams. It just does not happen because this is their life, right? But I'm not talking about that super shredded body builder type of person. I'm talking about that fit and healthy and lean um, person who has flexibility in their life. They're not overthinking every single bite, every single moment. And also when it comes to the rest of the things they do in life, they're not worrying about every single decision. Um, they probably don't have higher, high, high levels of anxiety. They're more laid back and relaxed because they have this more like a, 
natural way of looking at, at things and not panicking over every single little detail uh, because you need to have your mindset relaxed too. It's not only the body and the physique and the food and the exercise decisions that you're making. It's like, how is your overall lifestyle? Are you worrying about everything? Are you looking for things to worry about? Because if you do, you're probably not going to be the healthiest version of you. All right, so we talked about some of the things that she's probably not doing. Now let's talk about some of the things that she is very likely doing and that will be surprising when you ask her, hey, what are you doing to have that body and that shape uh, that you that you are or have right now? She is likely eating over 2,000 calories a day. Now, this is, of course, a number that does not apply to every single person that you have to eat to 2,000 calories at least, right? Of course, there are maybe some very tiny, very petite women whose um, daily energy needs are less than that. But honestly, I haven't seen I don't think I've ever had a client who has had lower maintenance calories than 2,000, what they should be eating at least. They should be eating at their maintenance at least 2,000 calories. So now that fit person that you're looking up to, want to be like her, she's probably eating 2,000. You'd be surprised how much more they might be probably eating. So uh, for example, once I, when I work with people and I get them up to their maintenance and then even past that, and sometimes they even do surplus and then they come back to maintenance, they are finding that they're maintaining their weight around 2,000, 2,100. And I've also had somebody who maintained her weight at 2,700 calories and was one of the fittest persons, pre, pre, people that I have ever worked with. And this is really amazing. And once you understand that, that those people who are fit and lean and healthy are not starving themselves all the time. I think it's really empowering to know that, yeah, you can eat 2,000 plus calories. 2,000 is not a freaking magical, out of this world, crazy big number. It is not. 2,000 calories is totally normal. I know me personally, uh, if I ate 2,000 calories a day, I would be very hungry, like very, very hungry. I'm not even trying to do that. So, um, of course, I am tall too. But still, uh, it's it's you know it's nothing like outrageous. Like oh my goodness, two thousand. That's like insane amount of calories. It is not. And you too, if you're listening to it, there's a very good chance that you are able to maintain your body weight. You should be able to be in a really great shape by eating two thousand calories a day. The next thing that this person is probably doing is lifting weights three to four times a week. You know, maybe maybe more. I don't know. It depends on a person how much experience they have, how long they have been doing this for. But she's definitely lifting weights three, four times a week because we have already talked so much about the importance of muscle mass. This is the thing that gives you the shape and uh, the size and then the looks. So you cannot have this really um, good-looking athletic physique if you are not doing some sort of resistance training, in my opinion, at least. Next thing, this person is probably walking and being acti active at, outside of the gym too. Uh, you know, it depends on the person again, but in general, I recommend at least an hour of walking every day, get outside, get some sunshine if possible, even if there is no sun where you live, it's still getting outside has so many health benefits. And you got to get outside and get your steps in. Actually, it's been shown that in those people who lost weight, one of the reasons why they gained it back is that even though they kept working out, they actually stopped walking. They stopped the non-exercise activity. They were not just active outside of the gym. So this is important to keep doing that all the time, right? No matter where you are in your, whether in your fat loss phase or building phase, whatever it is, you should always be working, uh, walking and doing stuff outside of the gym. It's not only the workouts that give you the results. The next thing that she's very likely doing is she may use the check-in, uh, the scale to check in once in a while, but she does not cut her calories if the weight is up a pound. Actually, I already kind of talked about that previously too. So yeah, I'm not saying that those people who are really fit and lean, that they never weigh themselves. Maybe some do always, maybe some don't, but I think they are fine with like stepping on the scale, getting the data, understanding, okay, this is where I am, moving on. Uh, after that. So not, not being obsessed with it. And also uh, she's likely prior prioritizing good nutrition, but also has some treats and fun stuff once in a while too. So uh, thinking that these people are very restrictive with their diet is not true. You would be surprised if you saw how some of these people are eating. And, you know, I'm not talking about like eating like a, like an asshole, you know, eating everything and anything and not thinking about how it impacts their body. It's, it's to say that most of the time they're eating healthy, they're having a high protein diet, they're eating lots of vegetables, they're eating good carbohydrates, but every now and then they will have their burger, they will have their ice cream. It's not that they never have these things and uh, they're kind of white knuckling the diet and just pushing themselves super hard to stick with this diet that's so, so hard to do. Um, 
it's it's so cool like when you have high metabolic rate and you have plenty of muscle on the body you can eat these things you can eat the burger and you can eat the ice cream you have a glass of wine and your physique is not going to fall apart you don't have to start over or like start keto tomorrow now you just don't have to do these things and the people who are in a great shape and fit they know this they know this the, they understand how much value there is in building the physique and getting stronger building that muscle because then that will do the energy burning for them really and one thing one more thing that this person is very likely doing is prioritizing their sleep, uh, working on that. So there are so many things that you can do to improve your sleep. Of course, it always starts with sleep hygiene, having a good bedtime uh, routine, and also not watching TV or you know scrolling your phone at night. I never take my phone to the bedroom with me at all. I try to stay away from screen at night. So these are things that everybody can do. So if you're not doing this stuff yet, then this is where you should start because you want to be you want to get a lot of sleep, as much sleep as possible, really. And I do know that sometimes these things don't help. Like, you know, you may be doing all the bedtime routine and turn off the screens and keep the light down, lights down and all that, and you still can sleep. I definitely have experienced that. So this can be a little bit like deeper nervous system issue. And I, I know that. I have worked on that. I have some tool for it. Um, you know, how to calm your nervous system down. Uh, how to slow down your thinking, how to, you know, maybe like do a little massage, a little bit like relaxation techniques. There are things that you can do too. But if you haven't uh, kind of tackled the big things yet, the, the lights, the, the bright lights and the simulation, all that at night, you have to start from there uh, because sleep is super important. Some of the people that are most successful who have the best comp body composition and health and vitality and energy and all that, uh, I personally know them. They actually literally sleep like nine, nine hours a night. And I'm not going to lie to you. This is not me. I don't sleep nine hours a night. I just don't sleep that much. I wish I could. I, I'm very sure that I would be getting better results if I did that. Just not happening for me right now. But I'm doing my best and, and you know, staying in bed at least eight and a half hours um, and trying to sleep as much as possible. Because if you are prioritizing that, this is where your body really uh, recovers and and kind of gets ready for the next day and for the next workout and also your mind recovers. And uh, this is also really important part of uh, being getting fitter and getting healthier. So these are the things that people uh, who are very fit and lean are probably not doing and some of the things that they probably are doing. And one last thing I want you to really know is that this person who you really admire, I want to be like, she probably weighs more than what you think she weighs. Think about it for a little bit. Um, when you look at somebody uh, and you're like, oh my God, they're so lean. I wonder how much they weigh. And you're like, yeah, I think they're maybe like 130 pounds. And you ask them the question, see what the answer is. I literally ask, I mean, I don't know, maybe somebody will be offended. I'm personally not offended when somebody asks me how much I weigh. Um, but you may find that they are like 10, 20 pounds heavier than what you thought. Because like I said, they are not so worried about the scale number. They know that muscle weighs something too. They know that it's not ideal to, you know, that it's not their goal to lose fat every single minute. And that's why they're not dieting every single minute. It is important to put on muscle and maintain that and that will weigh also. So yeah, ask them the question and ask them, hey, can I can I ask you something? If it's too personal, don't answer, but I think that will be fine. And you will be surprised to hear that they're probably 10 to 20 pounds more than what you thought, which again, also once again says that do not worry about the scale all the time. Don't give it too much attention. It's not the most important thing. All right. I hope that this episode was helpful for you. Let me know how you liked it and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.